Well, we've come in from our boondocking location near Ajo to a park near Y. It's going to be uh, probably four or five days of not great weather. Remnants of the big storm that hit California a few days ago. It's going to show up here. Lots of wind, some rain, cloudy skies. So I thought this would be a good chance to bring the RV in and flush out all the waste tanks. I also want to go in and uh, pull out my waste valves and give them a clean because some of them aren't closing all the way. I have electric valves in the RV and uh, when they're closed or open it shows red or green LED but some of them aren't even showing an LED I'm getting a lot of weeping through them so it's kind of a pain. So a good chance to do laundry and do maintenance on the rig, clean the inside. First thing I'm going to do is flush the tank so I just hooked up a hose to the water and I've got one of these uh, wands I can put down the toilet and they spin at high velocity so it can flush out the black tank and then I'm also going to pull out the drain in the gray tank and stick a, a water heater wand in there and try to flush out that as well so we'll start with the black tank there we go Got her jammed down the toilet, down into the black tank. And I usually just let her go. Keep a bucket handy. I'll put it in after I'm finished. Usually after I'm finished with this, I'll I'll put a block, get a bucket of water and put a little bleach into it and let it sit for a while just to decontaminate it. And I actually have the valve closed. And then on here I have a Sea level two tank monitors so I can tell when the black tank gets up, usually gets up around 90%. I go out and open it so it gets a good flush. Do that uh, multiple times until we get uh, clear water running out instead of uh, nasty looking water. This site's kind of off level a bit so it's hard to, to get a good run so I had to kind of MacGyver myself some stuff. I don't carry any sewer supports because I so I don't really go to RV parks very frequently, so when I do, I just kind of make myself a, a platform. Saves me having to carry that stuff. As far as hosing, I, I use this uh, blue, I think it's called an Evo, made by Camco, 25-footer. I like it because it's very soft and supple and it rolls up really small. And then I have a second one as well, a little 10-footer, so I can go 35 feet on my fresh water. And then I use that for off-grid um, filtering of my water. And when I fill my tank, I filter the water. Right now, I'm not too worried. This RV park's got pretty good water, so we're hooked up to the city for this flushing. And then for the, f I also carry this Zero G. It actually, is a drinking water safe hose, but I mostly use it for rig washing. It's 50 feet long. And then things like this, if I have to do this, it's very convenient. It also rolls up quite small, that's what I like about it. So all my hoses can be pretty compact. There we go. Every once in a while I'll kind of reposition that down there so it hits a different area of the tank. I also have a tank flush in the black tank but right now it's not working every once in a while because we, we come down here and get some hard water in there it kind of crusts up and suddenly my my tank built-in tank flusher won't work so i have to pull out the little sprayer in there and repair it but i'm not going to do that this time I'm just going to use my wand Looking too bad now, running fairly clear. So we'll switch to the galley tank. Okay, so a few years ago I modded the sink and put in a nice stainless steel kitchen sink. Nice deep sink here. Then it had a smaller sink to the side. And also underneath, I changed the plumbing around so that instead of a P-trap that was there before, I have what they call a Hepvo valve which unlike a P-trap uses water to uh, stop the, the sewer gases from coming back up. This has a, a kind of a 
It's kind of a plasticky membrane that closes, so it allows flow only one way. Once the flow is gone, it blocks it. But usually it needs to be cleaned every once in a while, and it's a good chance for me to flush out the galley tank, which is right below. So this just unscrews and I can pull it out and clean it, and then that allows an opening where I can stick down a flusher and a water heater flusher has a very narrow nozzle so it's perfect for doing that so we'll just unscrew this and i'll show you there's the rv water heater flusher so it can just fit right down there doing that I just let the hepo valve stuff soak and then I can clean it out later give you a look at what's going on with my tank valves so this is the one we're cleaning right now this is the galley and you can see it goes red which means open but when you go to close that's supposed to turn green that tells me it's not closing all the way. There's some debris or something jammed in the valve, stopping the, the gate from closing. And these are really bad. This is my, my gray shower. You can see it opens, but it also doesn't show the green light, so it's not fully closing. And then here's my black, and it's not showing open or closed, so it's really jammed up in there. That's why I have to get underneath. There's only uh, four bolts to undo to remove those gates and unplug. These are electric valves I upgraded from the, the uh, traditional pull type rod valves to electric. And uh, so I have to pull them out. Unpl I just have to unplug the power and I can pull the valve right out and then I can clean it all up and, and lube it and put it back in and it should all work fine again. But anyway. First, we're gonna clean both that black and that, that kitchen gray really well because they're kind of stinky tanks and I don't want anything dripping on me. The gray is just shower water. It always stays pretty clean. Okay, soapy water. Stuffed some uh, J-cloths through there. I don't know if you can see in there. It's hard to see. But anyway, there's a membrane in there that gets coated with gunk after a while. You have to clean it out. Okay, back in business. Let's get to removing the waste valves and cleaning them next. I'm going to start first with the galley tank or kitchen tank. It's pretty easy to do. It sits actually between my tires here and there's a valve that was there before between the tires that I left in place so I can actually close that valve and block anything coming out that would be dripping out of the tank. You can see here I've cut a flap. It's taped with Gorilla Tape when I seal it up. So I just remove the Gorilla Tape and then the flap comes down and I can get access to where the valve is so I can remove it. Let's put a plastic bin under there to catch any drippings. So we'll just remove that Gorilla Tape. So here we go. You can see the wiring there. There's a couple wires to unplug power. And then there's one that goes to the switch. And then there's four nuts and bolts to undo. 7 sixteenths. You can see my old gate valve that's there before the electric valve. So I just undo those nuts and bolts and I'll be able to pull that uh, apart and pull out the, the whole electric valve. Then we can take it out for cleaning. Unplug this now. You can 
these caps back so you don't get dirt in there. And there goes the power. So there might be a bit of dripping go on here, but it'll just be dishwater mostly. Okay, here we go. So you can see right there it's a problem. Some debris got jammed so the valve can't close all the way. There's a manual override here with an Allen wrench so I can open up the valve and uh, clean all that gunk out, clean up the gaskets. I usually got some water here coming out of my RV, the, the RV shower, so I can use some hot water, clean everything really well. And then the debris water I can pour down the sewer hose outlet there. Keep everything clean. Okay, got her all cleaned up. I'll just show you how that override works there. Just turn it like that. Open and close it just in case your electric failed. So I always get people saying, oh, there's a gap on each side. I don't know if you can see that, but there, on each side of the valve there's a little gap. But that's nothing to worry about because once this gasket fits in there, there's one on each side. Once it fits in there, there's no gap anymore. So it's meant to be there. <clears throat> so she should work again properly. Just clean that up, dry it off, and then I'm going to put some uh, lubricant on that. They uh, call for uh, Molly Coat. I think it's a 3M product, Molly Coat. I don't have any, so I'm going to use some lubricant that I have so I can get that. Yeah, it's called Luball. It's much the same. I use it for uh, o rings and faucets and that sort of thing. But you just don't want to put too much on so that it gums things up, but you want it in there to, to lubricate things. Then I'll put a little bit on the rubber as well. Okay, now the reinstall. I find this the trickiest part is to get it back in between these two because of the space I have in here. But you want to put the rubber uh, gaskets on first and then slide this in between. At least they say that's important in the instruction manual for this. I should be able to get a little bit of a space in there. Maybe I can get one on first. There we go. Slide the other one out without rolling that gasket. Well, I managed to wrangle it in there. It always takes me 10 minutes or so to get the gasket seated properly. So I got the nuts in there. Now you don't want to do them up too tight because otherwise you'll crack the case. Uh, manual on this one says around 10 inch pounds to 15 inch pounds. So they say tighten it up finger tight. And I have a little torque wrench that does inch pounds. So I have it set for 10. And it doesn't really take much. There, that's well, all, all it takes right there, that's 10. Yeah, so you want to start at 10. If it doesn't leak, you're good to go. If it leaks a bit, you could go up to 15. But if you go too high, you tighten these too high, they can crack, especially if it gets cold, you know. You get a little too much pressure on them. You really don't need them reefed right up really tight. Anyway, let me just reconnect the data cable here. green light there so we'll go see if she's uh, opening and closing properly now here we are so we got green that means closed and we got red green red 
So that means it's <clears throat> all the way open and all the way closed. Like I say, if it doesn't make it, one of those lights won't come on. So looks like we're good to go there. Now I just got to see if I have any leaks. Open that other valve and we'll give her a try. Okay, give her a tank, give her a try. Got no leaks with the tank fairly full. Looking good. Doesn't come out very fast because it's only inch and a half pipe, but I can hear it coming out. Okay, nice sunny warm day, low wind, so I can do the shower and black tank valves now. So I peeled off my underbelly. What I've done in the past is I've cut sections of my underbelly and uh, so I can take different sections out to get at things. Um, I have quite a large section taken out for these two valves. And then when I put them back in, um, they get screwed against the frame and anywhere it's not being screwed against the frame, I use Gorilla Tape on it. It's good if it's uh, warm, so I have it kind of sitting in the sun, keep it, get it nice and warm, because then the, the glue is nice and sticky. If you do it too cold, it doesn't stick too well. And then I'll also I'll clean this, uh, my underbelly is like a coral plas plastic. Clean that really well, and then the, the Gorilla Tape will stick to it. I use the 2.88 inch wide Gorilla Tape, so I get a nice wide part. Underneath they have a kind of a insulation bubble, just your foil bubble for minor insulation. Let's crawl under there and give you a look at things. What I'm going to do before I pull the valves off is I'm going to lower the RV and empty the black tank because it because because the black tank is over there, so that'll help it flow. All the stuff will flow out of the black tank. Then I'll do the opposite. I'll raise it really high, and and I'll lower my, I'll get my gray tank very drained, and then bring it down a little bit. I still want to have the black tank tipped up so that if anything's going to come out of there, it's going to be gray shower water, not black. Anyway, let's crawl under here. I'll give you a look. See where I've peeled some of the foil away. There we go. So this is how they put this thing together. That's my black tank there and gray tank here. Both about 38 gallons. Then they enter a Y and they come out on a three inch pipe. And you can see here's where my uh, my galley comes in, a one and a half inch pipe and joins it. Then it all goes out to my uh, sewer hose there, which I use a Wastemaster hose and I leave it constantly connected here and then it uh, goes into this storage box when I'm not using it. Anyway, one thing I had to do when I first pulled these apart, I had a cracked black tank valve and I found out that they had glued everything and even if I undid the bolts here, I couldn't get the valve out, it was too tight. Um, I guess I could have took some of the rail off of the tanks and maybe tipped it, but I was afraid of breaking plumbing on the top part of it. So what I did is I cut the pipe here and then I used some rubber, rubber instead, so it gives me some flexibility there. Anyway, that's been fine. It doesn't, it doesn't, once I do that up tight, it doesn't leak or anything. And it is on the gray side. If anything does leak, it's going to be just shower water that comes out of there. Anyway, that's the situation under here. You can see my valves replaced. My original had pull valves there, you know, the rod valves, and they, they would always be kind of end up breaking and were, would get sticky and were a big problem. And then the, I, I didn't have a shelf storage because I had these valves, rods sticking out with handles in my basement storage. So I went to both electric valves and they, they've been nice. And like I say, on that other valve you saw, there's a, um, a manual override there. So if I do have a problem with the electric, I can easily kind of undo a few screws here and get my hand in there and 
manually dump the valve. Anyway, we're going to pull both those out just like the other ones and we'll see what we have. Well, here we go. It's look too bad actually. Not sure why the gray wasn't closing. Maybe the nuts were too tight on one end or something. This is the black. Looks like there's some kind of debris got caught in there at some point. And this is uh, one end of the shower. Anyway, I'll clean up those uh, pieces in soap and water and clean the other mating surfaces down below. Just have them stuck in a bin right now. Then we can uh, sort it out. Okay, got it all cleaned up. Added some more lubricant to the gates and the gaskets. So should be good to go and install it. Okay, so the galley valve hasn't leaked or anything. I've been using it for about a day and I filled the tank right up. So I've Gorilla taped that flap back in place. And the other two valves are back in place. Got my rubber boot back in place. So far no leaks, but I'll probably leave it open for another day or so. Fill both those tanks up and just make sure I don't get any weeping or anything before I go to the trouble of putting the underbelly back in place. I also have a bit of troubleshooting to do with my valves. The galley valve, like I say, is working properly. Red is open, green is closed, but even though these are fully closing and fully opening now, the LEDs aren't working right. You can see right now they're supposed to be closed. That one shows red when it's open. That doesn't do anything when it's open. And when it's closed, neither of them show green. I know it's not the control panels because this is a working one so I took them apart and put the data cable into this one and same problem didn't work. So something either in the data cable or maybe in the valve itself but that'll be for another day. At least my all my valves will be closing now so I won't be getting any more weeping. Because when I was off grid I would get some weeping or, you know, I'd show up at a campsite and this hose would be full of uh, wastewater. Luckily, it has a valve on its end there, so it's not such a big problem. It's kind of a problem, though, when I use my macerator because it, it's, you know, it's uh, putting, putting the waste past those valves and it kind of fills up the hose to the macerator, so it's kind of a pain when I'm ready to leave. It can be a bit messy, so... I'm glad to have those valves back working again. Till next time, Ray from Love the RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.